Welcome to the first episode of the Ministry of Motion Pictures podcast. Ministry of Motion Pictures is a place where we talk about Christians in film and the Christian film subgenre. My name's Todd Schaefer. I'm an animation director and a Christian filmmaker. And over my career, I've worked on hundreds of projects from commercials to feature films. And in the last decade, I've written and directed two animated Christian films, The Promise, Birth of the Messiah, and Prodigal the Musical, which we hope to release next year. The art of cinema is only 124 years old. And in this short time, filmmakers have produced half a million feature films. Wikipedia lists 375 films that it considers to be Christian-themed films. It's an incomplete list by their own omission, but it's the most extensive list I've come across. It includes films that date back to 1912. But their list might be a little too broad. Some of the films included on their list are The Blues Brothers. Well, me and the Lord, we've got an understanding. We're on a mission from God. Dogma. Behold the Metatron, herald of the Almighty, and voice of the one true God. An apocalypse now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Now, if half of these films are Christian, that would mean out of 500,000 films, 187 are Christian. That's about 2.5%. With those kinds of numbers, we can safely say that we are far from being leaders in the cinema. In fact, our presence in 124 years of cinema is almost non existent. How did this happen? For a thousand years, Christians have been leaders in the arts. Michelangelo, Bach, Rembrandt, Dostoevsky, Da Vinci, Handel, and Tolstoy are just some of the titans who use the arts to express their Christian faith. What has prevented us in the last two centuries from becoming leaders in the cinema? At the advent of cinema, Christians were conflicted over its value. Some deplored it as a tool of Satan, calling it the celluloid serpent. But others recognize its potential value. An Episcopal minister named James K. Frederick said, The motion picture camera, like the printing press, is a gift from God. We can use it for God's purpose. He said that in the 1930s. I don't think there are any easy answers as to why we haven't embraced the cinema. But if we're going to see change, we have to attempt to understand how we got to the place where we are today. Because we are not standing on a place of strength we are bathed in the glow of well-deserved ridicule and indifference. We don't want to carry this forward as we enter a, a whole new era of explosive growth in filmmaking. We have to shed this reputation, whether we created it or not. Hollywood is facing a tectonic shift in distribution models and production, unlike anything it's seen since the advent of sound. And while it comes with many new challenges, the question that must be at the forefront of our mind is, where will Christian films be in this new world? Do we want to usher in a golden age of Christian filmmaking? I think we can do it. I think this could be the era where Christians take the ground we never did in 124 years of filmmaking. I believe the Christian film genre can regenerate itself to become as powerful and transcendent as we say it can be. But what can we do to make this happen? It seems like an enormous effort, but I don't think it needs to be. The history of cinema repeatedly shows how a few revolutionary filmmakers can change the face of cinema. The French New Wave is a perfect example. It was started by a handful of filmmakers like Truffaut, Godard, and Chabrol. These men were dissatisfied with standard Hollywood film fare. They didn't want to tell the kinds of stories Hollywood told. They had their own stories to tell, with their own cinematic sensibilities. They even broke the rules of time-honored film conventions, making the jump cut a part of their language. And guess what? Hollywood took notice. And Hollywood filmmakers began to follow these men. I wonder if Christian filmmakers need to do the same. Maybe we're trying too hard to fit into the Hollywood model, when we should be attempting to revolutionize a new form of storytelling one that would better serve the stories that we have to tell. It's my aim to use the Ministry of Motion Pictures, this podcast, to explore the landscape of Christians in film and the Christian film genre. I intend to talk to historians, filmmakers, critics, theologians, distributors, 
Anyone who can help me understand where Christian film is, where it's come from, and where it needs to go. I want to inspire filmmakers and the supporting personnel and resources that are needed to move us into a new era of Christian filmmaking. The heart of the Ministry of Motion Pictures is this podcast. And while I would like to post once a week, I think it'll start slowly with perhaps two podcasts a month. I'm a working filmmaker. I'm not a professional podcaster or a radio person. My goal is to get the content out as I have time, which means it could be rough around the edges. My first guest on our next episode will be a screenwriter who has written 14 produced Christian films. That's nothing to shake a stick at. He's been wrestling in the Christian film trenches for most of his career. He lives in the outskirts of my hometown of Baltimore, Maryland, and his name is Sean Paul Murphy. I hope you'll join me next week to hear from Sean. Please promote this website and podcast wherever you can so that it will have a greater reach into the Christian community because we are trying to start a movement. You can find us on the web at www.ministryofmotionpictures.org. And I'll see you next time.